Hi there, welcome back to my kitchen. Um, a lot of people have asked me uh, again why the name Beyond Sauerkraut or Kicking It With Karen, Beyond Sauerkraut and what I'm trying to do with my channel. Well, there's a number of things I'm trying to do. First of all, it's Beyond Sauerkraut. So yes, we're talking about fermenting, but far beyond that, a number of other things that I do for um, my health, what I eat for my health and well-being. So one week I'll be doing gluten-free, the next week I'll be doing a beet kvass, another day I'll be doing meatloaf. Um, it's all a part of my journey, the foods I'm cooking that have taken me away from the conventional big box grocery stores. So I hope you're happy to come along on this ride with me and uh, continue to discover with me what I'm discovering about my foods, my health, and my well-being. So today in my kitchen I am making chicken stock. I make chicken stock with chicken feet, but I didn't have the opportunity to start that video with you, so I'll just show you what's going on right now. Then my plan is to, let's see, do the beet kvass. We did some beet kvass together a week or so ago, or two weeks ago. I have to bottle that so Troy and I have something to drink in the morning. Uh, but let's look at the, let's look at the chicken stock. Okay, for those of you who don't like feet, here they are. So look away. Chicken feet really produce the most collagen-rich chicken stock I've ever tasted. A lot of gelatin comes out of those bones and oh, it's just, it's honestly the best stock I've ever had. There's my stock and that's what I'm doing in my kitchen today. I will show you the finished product some other time. So I usually have a lot of beet kvass on hand some because Troy and I drink between two and four ounces a day for gut health. Um, but I ran out. Do you believe it? I never run out of beet kvass. That's why the last time we made it, I made a gallon and a half. So that should keep us going for a while. But I do have five more beets. No, four more beets. They're still pretty big, not like the bowling ball size ones we had before. But I'll be making some beet kvass. Uh, to replace what I'm going to take out of the fermentation today. So uh, let's go get that beet kvass and get started on that. So here's that plain beet kvass. I did end up finishing it in the refrigerator because despite all of my efforts, I started to get some calm yeast. It was already so far along on the fermenting process that it was gonna be okay just to finish it in the refrigerator. So I capped it off and put it in there it's time to strain it and uh, get the kvass into some jars. It's beets, so we're wearing gloves. We need to get that cabbage leaf out of there first. My sour stones. Yeah, here's my sour stone. I think I have another one in here. And another one. my cabbage leaf. Oh no! All right. So we're going to strain our beet kvass and I just want to remind you when you are working with probiotics please don't use a metal strainer or a metal spoon. Try to use something that uh, will not react with the acid in the beets. Okay. Here we go. Oh, that's such a pretty color. We should be getting about two quarts out of this. Oof, it's awfully thick. Kind of viscous. It smells so good. This is just the simple beet kvass. So this is the one that had no additives. Just beets and brine. Get my hand in the way. So let's see what else we can get out of here. There we go. 
Beats, and Brine. Okay, I think that's good enough. So you could actually use these beets for a second fermentation, but I really like my beet kvass strong, so I'll just feed this to the compost. Now you absolutely do not have to add this, but I am going to add a quarter cup of ginger bug, which is just fermented ginger that has been fermenting for, well actually, this I've been adding to this ferment for a year, so it's, it's quite alive. I've been adding sugar and ginger to it. The reason I'm adding this is because I like a little bit of fizz in my beet kvass. You'll see that in my video about making apple ginger beet kvass. I'll put a link to that in the card above and the description down below. Isn't that a pretty red color? Look at that. Okay, let's fill my quart size jar. leaving a little headroom. I'm going to let this sit at room temperature for about a day or two so that we can get some uh, carbonation. Of course these jars have been sanitized. Boy that's thick. There we go. I don't think we'll get a full one out of this one, but that's okay. Maybe we will. No, not exactly full, but awfully close. So this is really just a simple beet kvass. Beets and brine. That's it. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, that's good. It's already carbonated. So I added a little bit of ginger bug just to get the carbonation going, but I think this is ready to go right now. Great. So while I'm working on this, I'm going to go ahead and go downstairs and get the apple ginger beet kvass, and we'll go through the same process. I'll get it all bottled up. Okay, let's taste this before we put anything in it. I don't think I'm going to need any uh, ginger bug to make it carbonated. So let's see what it tastes like. Oh goodness, this one really has a strong apple flavor. That apple is coming right out and it is carbonated so I don't need to add any ginger bugs. So excellent. Oh, apple ginger beet kvass. All right, I got about a quart, or I got exactly a quart. Let's do this. Yeah, a little bit more. Well, I get a titch more for myself. Excellent. That apple is so powerful. Sweet, savory beet kvass. Love it. Before we go, let's check on the chicken stock. Uh, yes, very good. This will take about three more hours to cook down. Uh, and then I will strain it out and I'll have a beautiful, thick chicken stock.
I hope you enjoyed what you saw today and if you did please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell so I can tell you when I'm coming back in your kitchen. Bye bye!